If you enjoy this video, please consider giving a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you have any ideas for future videos, share them in the comments section below. So as you begin to drift comfortably asleep, you can listen to my voice in the background. And while you listen to my voice in the background, I don't know whether you'll find that you drift comfortably to sleep faster with the sound of my voice, with the words that I use, or perhaps with the spaces between my words. And as you comfortably drift off to sleep, I'm just going to tell you a story. A story about a king. And one morning, like many others, this king wakes up, having slept so soundly, so peacefully, so comfortably in his bed. The king wakes up. And he rolls over and looks at the queen. He gives her a kiss. As she snuggles down a little deeper into the bed. He then climbs out of bed. He walks over to the window. He opens the window, breathes in some fresh morning air. And he gazes out over the land below. He looks out beyond the walls of the castle. He looks out to the nearby town. He looks out over towards the river that weaves through the woodland and the countryside through meadows and farmland. He notices the gentle mist above the fields, the way the rising sun glistens on the river. He can see a boat out on the river. He can feel the warmth of the morning sun while breathing in the coolness of the air. And the king grabs an apple from a bowl of fruit that's in front of the window and walks around the room to the exit. He leaves the room, tries to close the door as quietly as he can, letting his wife sleep while he walks down the corridor, and goes to start his day. And as he walks down the corridor, biting into the apple, chewing the apple, Wondering how his day will go. He can hear people milling around. He can hear people cleaning. And he walks down the stairs. He goes downstairs in the castle. He goes to a grand dining room. sits down at one end of a long table in that grand dining room. He gets bought his breakfast, and eats his breakfast while he sat in that dining room alone. And after breakfast, he walks out of the castle and wanders into the gardens and he starts walking around the garden. And every morning 
The king follows a similar routine. He wakes up. He lets his wife lie in. He has some breakfast. He walks around the garden. And then he feels ready to start his day. And as he walks around the garden, so he notices the different plants. He just pays attention to the way bees are pollinating the plants and flying from flower to flower and dragonflies hovering and birds jumping around and flying and the way trees sway gently in the breeze and the different smells of the different flowers as he walks past them and the feeling of the grass under his feet and after walking around the garden helping himself to feel a sense of connection of grounding, of calmness, of peace The king sets to work for the day. And the king goes to his study, sits down at his desk, gets out a huge old book, thuds it down on the desk, goes to the page he's marked, to carry on reading from and he continues reading through that book while taking notes on what he's learning and as he reads through the book so he begins to learn more about an ancient text that he's searching for And he's been searching for this ancient text for years, just trying to find out where it may be. And he's been reading different ancient books to find the location. And this ancient text apparently helps to teach about peace, ways of bringing harmony and connection. And he wants to do the best by his land. And he wants to promote peace and harmony and find the best ways of doing that. And yet he feels Although others tell him that he's wise, he feels that he's not. He feels that he's got a long way to go and a lot more to learn. But he doesn't know what that journey is or what it is he needs to learn. He just knows that a text like this may well help. And so as he reads and takes notes, he discovers some patterns in the text, some way things are worded, way things are put together, and he realises that he thinks he's figured out where this lost ancient scroll is, this lost ancient text. And so he writes down what he thinks. He looks at a map. He works out that it's a few days travel. And then he sits back in his chair, pleased with his discovery. And takes a few moments to think about how 
he will travel to that location. And while he's doing this, his wife, the queen, wanders into his room. And he tells her they're going to go on an adventure. They're going to go on a journey to find this ancient text. And later that day, the king and the queen set off in a horse and carriage down to the riverside. They pass through the village. They travel all the way down to the riverside where they board a small boat. Their luggage is placed on the boat with them. And the boat sets off down the river. And the king feels a sense of excitement. And is glad his wife's with him. To share the experience. And they set off down the river, heading to the river mouth, heading to the open ocean. And they arrive at the ocean. Then the boat pulls into a harbour near the river mouth, just a little way along. And all their stuff is transferred to a bigger boat. And they get on the bigger boat. And that bigger boat pulls out of the harbour. And starts travelling out across the ocean. And the king and queen have never really been outside their land. They've never been beyond the edge of the ocean. So this is an adventure for them. It's all new and exciting. And while the boat goes on this journey, they walk around the deck. They notice what it feels like to be swaying gently on the ocean's surface as the waves pass by. The sound of the water, the breeze, the way the sun is setting in the sky as they continue across the ocean. They then settle down for the night. Knowing that it won't be long until they arrive at their destination. And the next morning they awake. They have breakfast, they enjoy the sea view. They relax on the ship. And halfway through the day the ship reaches land. And they leave the ship. And there's a carriage waiting for them. And their belongings are placed on that carriage. And they board the carriage and travel to a nearby hotel. And they explore the town around the hotel, knowing that tomorrow they'll be going out into the woods to search for that ancient text. So they explore the town. They observe the people. The architecture. And then they go back to the hotel. Sleep for the night. And in the morning. 
they set off into the woods. And they go on foot, they walk from the town, they walk out in the direction of the woodland, they walk through some fields, they walk through some meadow, and they walk into the woods, and as they walk into the woods so they notice the changing sounds of their footsteps, the way the air gets a little cooler in the shade. The sounds of the rustling leaves of the trees and the movement of the branches. And they wander deeper into the woods and the king has his map out. And they initially follow a path. And then they turn off the path and head deeper and deeper into the woods. And as they head deeper and deeper into the woods, The king has to follow the map to make sure they're definitely in the right direction and heading to where he thinks this ancient text is. And after some time walking deeper and deeper into the woods, they find some ruins looking like the ruins of an old monastery. And the king and queen explore the ruins, looking for any sign that there was an ancient text here. And they know they're in the right place because they found ruins, but they don't know if they'll be the ancient text. And then the queen notices that there's a feeling of air on her legs as she walks past an old ruined wall. And she realises in the ground that there's signs that there was a tunnel here and that there's still a little bit of a tunnel visible. and the air seems to be getting sucked down into that tunnel. So she calls over the king and together, they move bits out the way of that tunnel, and then together they walk down into the tunnel. And they light a torch, noticing the flickering flames on the walls, stretching down the tunnel the way shadows dance. And the sounds of their footsteps down here. And they walk down the tunnel. And then they find themselves coming out in a chamber. And across the other side of the chamber is a door. And down here, everything still looks pristine, as it probably had when it was last used. Most of the original tunnel had mud and leaves, and different things had blown into it over the years. But it seemed that down here, this far down, much of that wasn't reaching. And they walk through the door into another tunnel. They followed that tunnel for a little way before seeing a door off to the left. 
and the tunnel carried on. And they didn't know whether to take the door on the left or keep walking. And they decided they may as well explore through this door because they can always come back and carry on if they need to. So they walk in through that door. And none of the doors are locked. And as they walk in through that door, so their torch catches reflections from diamonds and other precious stones dotted around the walls that aren't there to display wealth, but are there to spread light and colour. And they light a few torches around the room. And they see a chest on the floor. And the chest has a huge lock on it. And the king tries to yank on the lock. And this chest looks as if it could have been placed here just days ago. And the king kicks at the lock to see if he can break it. All to no avail. And so the queen takes a pin from her hair. And then another pin. And starts fiddling inside the lock with the pins. And the king's mumbling about how it probably won't work. And the queen tells him to be quiet. She needs to focus, she needs to concentrate, and she needs to listen. And she listens closely, as she gently moves one pin around, and then moves the other pin, and then gently moves that pin around again, and then moves the other pin, and then moves the pin around again, and then moves the other pin. And then a fourth time, and the lock pops open. And she looks up at her husband and smiles. And he tells her how wonderful she is, and clever she is. And she obviously tells him that she knows. And they both open the chest together and look inside the chest. And inside the chest, they see what looks like a purple velvet cloth, scrumpled up, and resting gently on the cloth, is a book that looks like it could be a modern book, could be from today. It's in such good condition. And the king picks up the book. He sits on a seat in the room. His wife, the queen, sits next to him. They start turning the pages, taking a look in this book. They realise that this book is many, many, many hundreds of years old. And that it is filled with all this wisdom they were seeking. And knowledge about how to teach peace and love. Knowledge about the difference that can make to society, to those around them. How to teach compassion and putting others first. And they thought this all seems very common sense. But common sense isn't necessarily always common.
and they now had a way they could teach about a way of life, a way of interacting with each other. A way of reducing suffering and anxiety. An increasing awareness of positives. And they took the book with them as they left that chamber and then left the ruins. They found their way back through the woods as the sun was setting. They found their way back to the hotel. Spent the night in the hotel before setting back on the ship to their land and then transferring to the small boat. Travelling up the river Back to their castle. And then teaching and implementing these teachings from their castle out into the nearby town and getting people to be able to teach these teachings far and wide. To help people to be able to look deeper rather than just at surface meaning of things. To increase compassion, love and kindness for others. Helping to reduce anxiety. And helping to find ways forward from problems, rather than becoming stuck in problems. And they gained great pleasure by teaching positivity throughout their land. <laughs>